Live from Union Square in the heart of San Francisco. It's theCUBE, covering Spark Summit 2016. Brought to you by Databricks and IBM. Now, here are your hosts, John Walls and George Gilbert. And welcome back here on theCUBE. Our coverage continues with the Spark Summit 2016 from San Francisco. Uh, just about ready to wrap things up here, our, our last interviews of the day, and it's a pleasure to welcome along with George Gilbert, uh, the uh, lead analyst at Wikibon uh, for Big Data Analytics. Uh, we have Sudhir Jangar, who's the Indian head and CTO of InfoOptics. And Sudhir, thanks for being with us here. We appreciate your time. And uh, Juan Asenio, who is the principal engineer at Rockwell International, Juan. A pleasure to have you as well, sir. Nice to be here. So here, tell us about InfoObjects, if you will, first, for our, our viewers at home who might not be familiar with, with what so you So InfoObjects is a company where we provide a Spark uh, consultant services around a Spark ecosystem. So, like say, we help companies like Rockwell and other, like say, companies where uh, Spark is being used heavily, or we are trying to suggest Spark ecosystem for those companies. All right, so, so. I, so you say you help Rockwell, so why don't I ask you then, what's a company like Rockwell doing in a place like this? Um, I mean, how are you uh, engaging with Spark these days, and, and what are you seeing here? I'm just curious about your, your take on the show. Sure, um, Rockwell is in the uh, industrial internet of things. We automate factories, and we leverage the, that data from the factory, and uh, the big, the big data ecosystem enables us to uh, do that scale, Spark being the integral uh, compute engine that we're leveraging, and we reach out to our uh, consultant partner, uh, InfoObject, to help us to uh, deliver solutions. So we say the industrial IoT. Um, give me your, a little more on that, a little, your definition of that, because, uh, um, and we know about the Internet of Things, but 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 in terms of how this applies to industry, how it applies to the so your manufacturing clients, for example. Sure, uh, this is a is a big liability uh, with the the factories. Uh, you can stop production if you make a mistake, uh, uh, or you can uh, hurt people. Uh, so, so we're dealing with plant floor data, factory data, uh, and some of those are the secrets of the these companies. How to, the recipes, how to make che uh, cheese or the cookies and all of that. So if we're bringing this data to uh, the cloud, uh, leveraging the data lake and it's part for compute, security, I guess, is paramount and uh, 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 making sure that we're not exposing uh, uh, customer data and, uh, at the same time bringing value to them. Mm -hmm. And so from an info objects perspective, when you hear about Rockwell, and their challenges. Yeah. You would sit here. I mean, how do you, or, or, or in their sp specific case, what are you working with Rockwell on? What, what, how are you advising them in terms of all the Spark initiatives that, that they have at their disposal? So, like, say, I'm mostly our role is around architecture and implementation. So, for uh, for example, in this particular use case, like, say, uh, the pipeline is almost, like, say, almost, like, say, being standardized on Kafka and then like the compute and processing is being done on Spark, then Hadoop is for storage only. So uh, the, mo the most of our work is around architecture and implementation of this use case. Mm -hmm. So, so let's, let's uh, drill down a level. So we were talking earlier about how your core business for a long time has been, at least in manufacturing, the intelligent controls on uh, machine tools, or I guess other equipment as well. Only now, it, they're, they're all connected. So what can you do now that you have connectivity that you couldn't do before? Yes, uh, in my particular business unit in uh, Rockwell, CSM, Customer Support and Maintenance, we have this uh, remote monitoring business, IoT. So the purpose is to leverage the sensor data and primarily the time series sensor data, as well as any other relevant data out there. So uh, once we egress that data to the data lake, uh, uh, we can uh, get inside as the data goes in, in motion or at rest. And uh, with the help of uh, our consulting partner, once we have the infrastructure in place, really from, from that point forward, it's all about tribal knowledge. So uh, what, what do we know about that particular process? 
And uh, to answer your question, uh, the data lake and, and uh, the ecosystem powered by Spark and make it possible uh, to do this in a cost-effective way that uh, it would have been impossible two years, three years uh, before. Drill into that tribal knowledge. Is it, is it that Rockwell knows not just about the controller, but the machine that it's controlling, and therefore you know what questions to ask? Is yeah, so we have, a, it's a good question, and a, in addition to providing the uh, hardware and software to automate these factories, uh, we also have experts They understand different verticals, like for example, automotive, uh, pulp and paper, steel, and so on. So, initially we were bringing the data and we were relying on uh, humans to look at the data, uh, to inspect the data visually, I mean, uh, looking at screens and so on. And uh, that process, uh, you, you can you can scale that process to uh, thousands and thousands of factories because those, e these experts are very rare. You, you can't find these experts, and, and so you need you need to uh, uh, a layer of technology to process the data automatically. And uh, so initially, we the, the first layer that we add in is to capture the knowledge of these individuals. So. Uh, because if you have uh, people working eight, eight hours a day, and when they go home, you have a hole, that knowledge goes home and, and rest. <laughs> we want to capture that, and, and uh, we have some uh, spark job with that uh, knowledge. Okay, so so we want to capture the, the uh, we want to capture that knowledge to, to so we don't depend on the people working, and then machine learning. So the same stream of data going through the system. We want to uh, leverage uh, uh, models that our data scientists, or with the help of info objects, can create for us to address some specific uh, uh, verticals that we have expertise with. So you take that tribal knowledge of automotive or transport um, and in motion or at rest, and you turn that into a model. So you've got a data scientist working with a, with, with a industrial engineer, and together they put together a model so that the industrial engineer can go to bed at night and you can figure out what's going on with the data. Yeah, so it, 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 the, it, the business model is such as, uh, it's an intelligent factory, we extract as much data as we can, uh, uh, as it makes sense. So once you have the data, mm -hmm. uh, we have experts that they have knowledge about the particular factories, and you have thousands of factories. So we want to capture their knowledge, so when they go home, we're not missing their knowledge. Is it the and that's called crowdsourcing analytics. Is, okay? it, is it the knowledge of the factory or the knowledge of the industry? The, the knowledge on that particular factory. Because uh, you may have a, a two, two factories that are paper machines, but are completely different. So okay. there are some commonalities, but our experts, they work with these customers, Sometimes they deploy the solutions, so they have intimate knowledge that they can apply, but we don't want to limit that to the, uh, only when they're working. We want to keep that knowledge 24-7. Uh, a smart job will not take vacation, okay? Yeah. So they can work 24-7. And on top of that, I mean, the, the crowdsourcing analytics, we want to do the machine learning. So we have a group of data scientists augmented with our consultant partner so we, uh, these data scientists, they have tribal knowledge on what are the optimization specific to that cookie machine, okay? What is the optimization that cheese line? And that's pure knowledge. And, and so you can predict some uh, KPIs. Uh, again, once you have a, a high throughput a stream of data going through uh, data lake ecosystem, Kafka, Hadoop, uh, Spark, the challenge is capturing the, 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 the analytics that the humans, crowdsourcing analytics, and uh, then the machine learning. So all, all happening at the same time. And, and what enabled this is uh, the data lake and uh, the Spark capability. So now apart from private knowledge, I think uh, we are saving a lot of time here, right? Because system is becoming more proactive, right? Uh, yeah. so so we, we heard today about the, the, the release, you know, 2.0. Mm -hmm. um, for your clients, mm -hmm. so here, 
what do you think is the 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 wrinkle or the improvement that they can best put to use in terms of how you know Apache Spark is being improved? Yeah, so like say uh, with the 2.0 release, like say obviously we are excited like about it, like say and uh, talking about the structural streaming part of it, uh, like say where the exact the uh, case uh, use case like uh, Rockwell will be helpful, right? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, for example, today, and uh, talk about streaming, today, if you want to do anything, uh, like say, with the, the stream of data, you need to first save it, then run your data frame APIs. Now that is possible, like say, you can directly run, like say, your data uh, frame API on top of streams, right? Mm -hmm. So in that case, like say, uh, your development task will become easier day by day, right? Use case overall might not be impacted, but the development scenario, uh, that will become much easier to implement. So. So, so what they're able to do then, I mean, so, so what is the so, case? So use case will not, like say, differ much, but what I'm saying is the, the development part will become easier to implement those things. I got you, yeah. sure, sure. And, 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 and so from the client side then, or from the, from the actual user side then, what do you see as being, uh, you, you heard what Sudhir was saying about structured streaming and giving you, you know, whole new capabilities. Um, how are you going to put those into practice? What, what are you looking forward here over the next 12 to 18 months in terms of being able to take that, those system improvements and put them into practice? Yeah, so uh, the challenge for us is uh, if you are, we are targeting uh, serving thousands and thousands of factories uh, and uh, bringing the data into a, a pipeline, uh, any improvement in the infrastructure, uh, such as a continued continuous screaming as opposed to micro-batching, uh, or uh, uh, any other uh, Im improvement that they specifically Spark bring to the table. Uh, again, we rely on our uh, consultant to, based on the architecture and the, our requirements, to, to advise uh, where we can take advantage of the, the, those uh, specific uh, improvements. Mm -hmm. So, but our goal is to, uh, uh, a very scalable uh, data pipeline. And uh, I think uh, we're pleased to hear those uh, uh, improvements that Spark brings to the table. Yeah, I think, I think you're in pretty good hands, it sounds like, yeah, that the capabilities are making you even more viable uh, in your particular market, and we certainly wish you the best of luck to continue that success, and uh, thank you both. Juan, sit here, thank you for being with us here. Thank you. On theCUBE. And George and I will be back with some final thoughts here on theCUBE here in San Francisco at Spark Summit 2016.